Today my topic is going to be residential HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. I would like to discuss the types of duct systems, the different types of furnaces and air handlers, and the types of air circulating in our homes. And when I say our homes, I mean systems commonly found in our homes in Atlantic Canada. But before we get started, I would like to clear up the term HVAC. The H, yes, it does stand for heating and the V does stand for ventilating. The air conditioning can be cooling, it can be humidifying, it can mean dehumidifying, it can also mean filtering, controlling odors, controlling noises, and controlling drafts. First, let's talk about duct systems. The first one being the reducing or also called truncated system. This system will keep reducing its duct size to maintain a certain airspeed going down the duct line. The extended plenum has the same size ductwork coming off one or two sides of its plenum, the full length of the building, with branches coming off those main trunks. The loop perimeter system has branches coming off its plenum, feeding a perimeter duct with all the air outlets installed inside this perimeter duct. The radial system has radial ducts or branch ducts coming off the plenum and going to the outlets or diffusers located on the perimeter of the building. Of all these four duct systems, the most commonly practiced installed system would be the truncated or reducing system. Now let's go ahead and talk about furnaces and air handlers. The first one up is the oil furnace. The oil furnace produces heat only. The second one is a wood furnace, same thing, heat only. This furnace here has an oil burner on the bottom and a wood compartment on the top. It's called a combination furnace, wood oil. This unit here is called a wood add-on. Because a wood add-on has no blower to get rid of the heat, it must be combined with another furnace with a blower. This example shows an oil furnace with a blower combined with a wood add-on. You can see that the air is going up the supply plenum of the oil and down into the wood add-on and up through its plenum. One of these units would be considered your backup unit. And it would require two thermostats, one for the oil and one for the wood add-on. This is a gas furnace. This one here is an electric furnace. Keep in mind, all of these six furnaces that I've just previously discussed are all for heating purposes. Now we're going to talk about air handlers. The air handler is very similar to a furnace. The only exception is that the air handler gets its heat from another source, which is often the condenser. In our part of the country, this configuration of unit is often referred to as air-to-air -air heat pump. And one of the main advantages going with a condensing unit is that it provides cooling as well as heating. This unit here is called a water to air, often referred to as a geothermal. The geothermal's condensing unit uses the earth to absorb or release its heat. This one here is called a package unit, often referred to as a rooftop unit. But in some cases, we see them installed in residential. Basically, it is an air-to-air -air with the air handler and the 
condenser all in one unit. This unit here is what we call a mini split or ductless mini split. It provides heating and cooling, but has no means of providing fresh air. My next topic is gonna to be the types of air flowing or not flowing through your home. The first one being supply air. The supply air comes from an air handler or a furnace. It's the one pushing air through the ductwork system into every room. First of all, you have the furnace, then you're gonna install a supply plenum, and then off that plenum, we need to install a plenum takeoff or starting collar. One of the first components you may find next to any unit is a flexible connector. This flexible connector eliminates any vibration that wants to carry out through the duct. The main ducts are often referred to as trunk duct. This trunk duct will be held in place using hangers attached to the floor joists. And often, some of your trunk duct or your plenums may be acoustically lined and the acoustic insulation will can or helps eliminate noise transfer through the ductwork. Your main trunk duct will consist of duct, trunk reducers, perhaps elbows, offsets, and end caps. Now let's talk about all the fittings required to get the air from the trunk to the room. The first fitting is going to be a takeoff. And there are many types of takeoffs, but the most common are your top takeoff and your side takeoff. After a takeoff, if possible, install a balancing damper into the pipe which is called the branch. In most of the branches, you will be required a few elbows. The very last fitting on every branch is called a boot. There are three types of boots. You have your angle boot, we have an end boot, and the last is a universal boot. And most of these boots have this decorative piece installed into them, which are called diffusers or registers. Now let's talk about what to expect when, when installing the return air, or also referred to as cold air. The return air is just the opposite of supply air. The air travels back into the system, through the grills, down the branches, and through a series of ducts back into the furnace. Filters are always installed on furnaces and air handlers to try and keep the dust away from all the com internal components. This filter is a disposable fibrous media fil filter and a cardboard frame. This one here is a pleated filter, disposable in a cardboard frame. This one right here is an electrostatic filter. When air passes over this type of filter, it becomes statically charged, which then will attract some of the particles inside that same air. The static charge of these filters are better in dry periods and will become less efficient during humid seasons. This picture shows you a disposable filter installed in a metal rack on the return side of the furnace. This is an electronic air cleaner. These air cleaners have the ability to remove particles much smaller than fibrous media filters. This air cleaner requires regular maintenance to remove most of the particles that have been attracted to collector plates inside the electronic air cleaner. The last filter is the HEPA, High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter, which may be considered 
the most efficient throwaway filter. Now for the return, you are also going to need to install duct hangers to keep your duct in place. Some of this duct may be insulated. On the return, before running your trunk duct, you will be required to figure out where your joist liner is, or you're going to need to install your joist liner first. And then once the panning is installed, you can now run your ductwork underneath the panning with a hole similar to this. This will connect to the bottom of the panning and create a return air duct. After that is done, you can install a grill for the basement or even grills in the floor on the main level. The next type of air is going to be exhaust air. This is air that we do not want in the building. Either comes out through your bathroom fans, your kitchen hoods, and your dryer. Even a central vac is considered an exhaust. Any air leaving the home or being forced out of the home is an exhaust. Your HRV even has one port exhausting. Most of the exhaust systems will be using round pipe and round elbows. This illustration shows an inline fan exhausting air from the dwelling with having insulated flex going to the outside. This insulated flex or insulation over the pipe should be for the first 7 to 10 feet from the exterior wall. This will help eliminate condensation on the exterior of the pipe during cold periods of the winter time. In most cases, our exhaust systems are installed with round duct, stack heads, a plastic stack head, and a round diffuser. The opposite of exhaust or stale air is fresh air or outdoor air. This is also brought in by fans. It can either be an inline fan, or it can even come in through our return air duct with a simple duct going outside in its hood. But the most popular way of bringing it in is through our HRVs, heat recovery ventilators. After the ventilator, it's still installed with, most of the time, round pipe, round elbows, and it will finish off again either in the ceiling on the wall using a stack head and diffuser.